uh, yes sir and now you start this session okay is all is in or uh, someone has to join it mm, maximum all of them joined sir okay right um uh, oh it's all joined where is this guy uh Um, I think few are missing. I think eighty members, right, Pavitra? Yes, sir. Uh, few of them not joined, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, okay. So before I go get into the next session of it. So what happened to the previous one, the homework or something a POC, what I've given to you people? Did you, got, did you all got chance to work on that and come back on that? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, rest, rest all, do you have any questions on that? Rest all, you have any questions on that, or is that is clear? Yes, you don't have any questions. Okay, I just want anyone to share their screen and they can walk me out or walk walk me through on the work what I have given in the previous session. Is there anyone to initiate it? Someone can take an initiative and they can share the screen and they can show me what they have done on the previous. Oh my God, he was here. Anyone wants to take an initiative? Or you want, you want me to call out the name? Either the way, I'm fine. You want to go ahead, Nandini? Yes, sir. I have finished my work, uh, homework. Oh, so sir. I will show you. Uh, oh, I can see your screen. Yes. Now, sir? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay. I still see your screen. Uh, you have to see your, yes, you know, track plus plus or any other ID that you have. And your screen is not visible. Uh, I can see your screen, uh, but what I see is like uh, the Google meeting. Ah, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Um, this is my uh, sheet of uh, homework, sir. Awesome. I will uh, create uh, a registration form, uh, name, email, ID, and gender address, date of birth. Um, I will show my output, sir. This is my output. I only use for HDM, so I can't uh, use. I just only use for a uh, CSS for a background uh, setting. Yes, okay, okay. You should uh, and uh, you, uh, you also told um, uh, the gender was uh, uh, using okay. radio buttons. Uh, yes. Date of birth, the date, uh, address for multi lines, and submit uh, button also. Uh, so it is. What's that? The phone number has an intuma. So, is that a password based one? The phone number, the last one. What do you have? phone number yeah you have something yes. in is that have you applied something called placeholder yes ah yes sir placeholder yes okay yeah, for, yeah for phone just number just like uh, use your asterisk in this okay uh you know to apply uh placeholder for the phone number so okay, the reason sir. is you have to apply the placeholder as an asterisk only at the time when you go and use something a password that means okay, the asterisk represents that is a secret value where 
people cannot see is see their in the naked eyes. So you know, okay, it's good. No problem. Okay, what happens if I go and submit on it? Wouldn't, wouldn't try see uh, what was my previous POC is like. My I asked you uh, you people to work on the HTML which has a Java function called out where you can copy it the input from either to the table or to the any labels. That is what I said. That means yes, I didn't you have, use any JavaScript. Yeah, that, that, that's the question. Because, see, what I've taught you is like, I taught you how to create an HTML, right? A basic concept as a form. And I also taught you, thing like this form can be copied. Let's say the first input what I'm giving inside a form has to be showcased somewhere, right? right? Then only I can understand the moment I click on the submit, then the entered values, I'm getting it or not, how, how, how will I confirm it? So that's the reason I I told like either you should have a table or a label so that the moment I go and click on the submit that the input value which is given in the text box has to be showed in the table or in the label. But what I see here is just a form what you have created. Yes. Uh, I don't see any any uh, action is taking place. Yes. So the moment, yeah. At least the validation is taken care. I mean the submit uh, button, the what I told you, the two yeah, different. Yes, no, without giving, yeah, without giving anything, can you go and please click a submit? You know to give the name. Just click on submit. No, the validation is not happening. Yes, sir. I didn't use any JavaScript tool. Just I use only HTML for native normal. This time, I uh, create a framework. Okay, okay. All right. I mean, this looks fine. This looks good. The the way we have, you have created it, you know, that the table is okay. But what I request is like to understand more the input what you are giving inside a text. You should know how to copy that values and have to take it to the SQL Server, right? Mm -hmm. At the back end, what and all you, any back end, what you are using it, we need to take it uh, to the back end. That is what I have uh, said you there is a, one of the JavaScript how to get a values document.get element by ID, right? That That is one concept which goes and collects the value inside the text box, and wherever you wanted to send it, you can send it over to the back end. So, so uh, I, I, what's the guy name who has. Uh, Pasted that uh, it's I mean the HTML uh, sheet last uh, session. What you have taken? What's what's his name? Uh, I think oh. it's Navin Kumar. Uh, Navin, right? Navin. Uh, okay. Uh, do you have that downloaded one, uh, Nandini? If you have downloaded it, so go through with that. Still, uh, you have yes. doubt. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a common uh, group will be created under a Telegram. Telegram is the hub where you can where an, uh, all uh, IDs will be created uh, under the Telegram. Shortly, it will be circulated to the people so that you can put any questions or any clarifications which you want to discuss with people. Okay. So remember, a complete flow is like until or understand until or unless you people understand how the input values are taken from the client side and how it has been posted to the server side. And from the server side, how it has been taken to the repository. The repository is nothing but your SQL server. Does it make sense? Okay. So, yes, any anyone else has done with the JavaScript what I have taught last session? Quickly, has anyone done with that? Document update element by ID. I'm using that. See, uh, the reason I wanted you people to practice the reason behind is like if I keep on getting into the couple of sessions it might forget you people to understand what I have taken in the first session. So that's that's a simple one which I have asked you people to do that by using a document that get element by ID where you can go and collect your 
this one right see i thought of uh, doing the thread operations break insert update and delete and all those stuff to the back end part. if i get started on the thread operations add delete and update if if you people don't understand that then i don't think uh, you know you will you will be able to understand what is a thread operation how it gets added to it built into it and added to us right so all i wanted is like uh, you people to please please work on the thread operations i mean sorry uh, work on this small javascript what i've taught you in the last session okay yes, okay uh, awesome so what i'm going to do is like a small slight change is someone uh, have sql part SQL is installed. Has someone has SQL installed? Any express editions? Do someone have it? Sir, I have. I could not install the SQL Server edition, sir. It's showing that the operating system does not support this. What operating system do you have? Windows Seven. Windows Seven should support. Right. Should support. Yes. and you have a uh, uh, page in your uh, system mm, place space space yes. in the memory you have memory in your system yes sir it's showing that the error message couldn't the, the operating system could not support the sql kindly you know following requirements for hardware and software that's what i'm asking see see what it tells is like mm. it just puts your hardware that's what my question is What? Okay. Uh, okay. How many GB of which? I mean, C C directory is your thing, I believe. And how many space do you have in your C directory? I mean, how many GB is free in your C directory? How to find this, sir? All right. Uh, can you share your screen so that I can tell you? Yeah. Anyone else who have installed uh, the SQL Server part? Nice. No one have installed on the SQL Server. MS SQL. Say yes or no. Either in the chat or you can unmute and you can tell me so that I'll be able to understand whether you are installed or not. See, I'm I'm here to support you people. Unless or until you support me, I can't help you on the technical end. See, as last session, Navin presented his uh, dev box and where he I've just taught at the back end where he understood and he did that. Similarly, I wanted to have every session as a practical. See, it's easy for me to take a presentation from my system and get it done, saying like this is what it is working is. You want me to have. a teaching way i don't want i don't like to have that sir i installed uh, my sql workbench uh, is it okay workbench yeah no uh, okay the even that is okay but what i request is like to have an sql no one has installed the sql huh? is it har or uh, is that um, i don't know really sir okay. sir so, i have oh, sir okay. yes bala Sir, I have, but uh, expert edition I may not have, sir. No, no, no worries. What edition you have it? Um, general edition, sir. Uh, I think. Yeah, that should work, uh, Bala. Yeah, yes, sir. That that should work. Work. Just a second. Just a second. Okay, sir. Yes, Malmi. So, what's your? Uh, can you click on uh, this one, computer? What's your left hand side? 
uh, C, D, E, you have right, you can click on computer. Yeah. On the top, you can click on it. Yes. Yes, no. You can click on it. Computer, computer. Just click on computer. All right, that will go. Wonderful, you have plenty of spaces. So, where do you have your software? Sorry, sir. Where do you have your software? I mean, the SQL part. Is that yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With downloads. Mm -hmm. This one, sir, Express Edition. This one? Okay. Uh, the SQL Server Express Edition. The, if the, I open this, I think this this is not it, but that uh, the the other one, the top one. The top one. Yes, this should be the next one. You have only 4 GB of RAM or is your RAM is high? More than 8 GB. Okay, how to see this like? Uh, you can, towards your uh, bottom, you have this Windows icon. You click on that. You have system or you can just, no. Okay. Okay, that, no, 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 not required. Not required the control panel. You have something called, uh, you can go and type something system. Type in the search yes. system. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on the top you have something called system. Right click on the system configuration or whatever. Yeah. System information that is very um, not that system information, the other one. Uh, you can close this window. You can read that. that. Um, system information. Yeah, you have some system, right? Uh, you have system. System. Yes, sir. Yeah. You can right click on that and yeah. Oh, right click. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. 4G. That's what I asked. Okay. Uh, 3.9. Oh, that's used. Mm. Uh, okay. If it is less, then it's going to hang you because. Uh, okay. All right. No worries. Uh, so what happened? You have double clicked it. Did that open? Or uh, still it's running in the background? Yes. TV video may not work as expected because the video card does not meet the minimum memory requirement of 64 MB of video. No, this is not this. This is this is different. This is a video media player. Yeah. No, this is not required. This you can close this one. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, the server. Sir, I think uh, the system has not required uh, uh, some driver, sir. Driver software. Driver software. Video software, yes, sir. No, that, that's okay. That's I'm not uh, looking into the video. What we are looking is like uh, we are looking into that uh, software. So when she tries to install it, it seems like she is getting an error. I just want to take a look. At it. Yes, span speed. I think your span fan speed is very easy. Oh, yeah. that much of speed it's in. It's like a Shadda the Express yes, or something. Sir. Runs very fast, huh? It's nice. Right. No, that's okay. It happens. Uh, you have this guy. So the skill server is open. The language it has asked. Okay, SQL server. Express advanced. Okay, you can you can go ahead with the last one. 
So you know okay. we are not going to go on to much on that. Okay, perfect. And now you can see download and get that install. Yes. Yeah, you can click on download. You're right, you're right. Okay. You want to cancel. Why is that you want to cancel? No. That's okay. You can switch on your uh, fan. Your uh, yes, sir. Okay, sir. Happens. Uh, Pavitra, what happened to this, this, this Naveen and few other uh, people? Is there, they are on leave today, by chance? Uh, sorry sir, for yes, sir, it was successful. Alright, you can click on uh, the open folder and you can get that. Sorry, uh, Pavitra, I was asking that uh, Naveen, is Naveen is on leave today? Because I thought that I will come so that I can project it. In that can be followed for. Hi sir, I am Dharani. Uh, Mam is not here in the mail. Can oh, I sorry. Call? Yes, that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for it. Accept. All right. Next. No management team is here now. They've left the. Huh? No, so only uh, trainees are the, I mean, candidates. I'm also a candidate. Oh, okay. Okay, then. Thanks for that. You can see it as set up as install great finish. Yes, sir. All right, so you have installed a SQL, but to utilize your SQL, okay. what to do is like wait. Um, you can click on the windows at the bottom, back menu. Okay, okay. I'll just type SQL SQL. SQL. There we go. So you have just uh, you know, just Okay, so you need to go and install SQL Server Management Studio now on top of it. So just type, I mean in the browser, you need to go download okay. it in the browser. Okay. SQL Server Management Studio 2019 or what is that, whatever you wanted. Where? Server Management, SQL Server Management, exactly. Yeah. That's it. On the top, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and yes, download SQL Server. There we go, there we go. On the top, download SQL Server Management Studio. No, no, hold on. Just, just come down. You have a download. You have totally came down. Just go up. You have something to download. There is top right there. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. No man, that will take you to the different uh, things, man. On the top right, you have SQL Server, right? That's a common one. It will take you to uh, again to get installed with the SQL. Then it will have an option called SQL Server. You all need a SQL Server. That's good. Did anyone call me? Anyone want to convey? All right, this guy is taking over. Awesome. All right, so how was your uh, weekend? How was it, how was it is going? So morning uh, we thought to have it uh, due to personal emergency. I could not able to connect with you guys. 
sorry for it and i uh, just back in the afternoon so out of having a connection in the evening yeah so how was your weekend how it is going no vacations i think i should have a video call with you so that i can understand what you people are doing on the other end they have asked you a general question man for this general question also you yeah man it's, it's downloaded you can click on that download.exe and that will run it ரொம்ப கஷ்டமாப்பா ஆல் ரைட் அட் லீஸ்ட் ஆன்சர் திஸ் ஹேட் யுவர் லஞ்ச் சார் எஸ் சார் ஓட்ஸ் அ ஹெவி லஞ்ச் ஆ இட்ஸ் அ வெஜ் ஆர் நான் வெஜ் ஆப்வியஸ்லி இட்ஸ் அ சண்டே சோ मोस्टலி யூ கேன் see ம் veg sir who is that wahid wahid what is that wahid you have one your answer same veg veg fry rice sir oh that's good. veg fry rice awesome mm. anyone had uh, biryani any biryanis no one had biryani for the sunday my goodness really no one had hmm interesting so i believe that you people have taken a oath and you came over here that whatever this guy going to ask he will not even know or you not even say a word let him talk so why i am spending this much of time is like you people can see it how she is getting installed with an sql so all is required as two things one is on the sql the basic installation and the second is a sql server management studio which is we say it as an id all right so two things is required to look into the to work on with an id so that we will be doing a cred operations over here and just learning after the cred operations we will be handling both the cases how we have worked with the client side and the server side to both of them will be interlinked together so that this client side any inputs is given that will get stored in your database get stored in that database okay so i'm spending this much time the reason is like you people have to go and install it you need not to get struggle so it's all straight forward one you can go and get your exe get it installed and the sql server management is on top of it. that's that makes sense actually i have one question totally 18 members right i'm not sure whether it's 18 or 16 i think it's 16 sir 16 right yeah. so i don't see three of the members over here i don't know either sir only management member 
All right, uh, who's that? Um, I mean, uh, Vahid, I think you have your SQL server, right? Meanwhile, who's that? Uh, told me that they have SQL server. Sir, Bala. Oh, sorry, Bala. Bala, can you uh, project your screen? So, so meanwhile, can I stop? Uh, yeah, okay, sir. Yeah, I'll stop. stop sharing so that once yeah, okay. you let me know. Yeah, okay, sir. Well, you can share this yeah, yes, uh, before that I just wanted to understand how many of you are from uh, uh, this one uh, analytics data analytics and how, how many of you from this web development and the secret server any any backend this all belongs to data analytics yes sir yes sir all of data analytics. Okay, so sir, I am I am in web development. Why this web development? You are is web development too. Then, sir, I am web developer. Already working. Sorry, you are Bala. Already working six months in app developer. Sir. You worked as an app developer. You mean to say that it's a mobile application? What do you mean? Yes, sir. No, I'm I'm asking the sessions. What I'm taking is on both ends, right? One is on the web development. The other one is on the this one. Uh, what is that we call it as? Uh, data. I mean data analytics. So just yes, wanted sir. to understand how many people are involved in data analytics alone, and how many people are involved in uh, web development, and how many are bo on both ends. I heard like two of the people are from web development. They 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 are they are into web development and the rest I can see they are into data analytics. Right? Muhammad is data analytics, yes, okay. Uh is also data analytics, okay. 
Yes, well, I can see your screen. You can open your SQL Server. Data Analytics, that means Data Analytics, okay. Awesome, okay. Perfect. All right, anyways, I just wanted because to teach you people on both ends. So, who are it's on the development and who are it belongs to a Data Analytics, what they need to understand when they get into the database. So, Nandini is the data analyst. Perfect. All right. So, any database, what any database, it can be in Oracle, SQL, MySQL, MongoDB, or any kind of a database can be used to connect your client side applications. And your client side application can be anything. It can be a .NET, Java, uh, Python, my whatever you wanted, you can have your client-side application. So all is needed is a service space, a data source is needed where it can go and connect your backend and it, you can transfer your data. Okay. The main objective of having a database, do you know why? Why we need to have database? Why this concept has been bought? There's many reasons behind. Why we need to have database? To collect the data. Okay. Yes, to collect the data. Okay. To collect the data and store it. Okay. And why I should collect the data and store it? See, as you, as you told that it, it, we, have, we, we used to collect the data. And the data are stored inside your database. Why we need to store it? What is the purpose of storing it? Sir, for a future purpose, we need to analyze the, any information to use this data. Awesome. Uh, this. That's right. That's awesome. Yes. So, for futuristic or future purpose, if we need to analyze any kind of data, what it has been stored, the best example is survey. If you wanted to get the last five years of data, and you wanted to make a survey of it and based on the survey or based on the data analytics you can project the future based in terms what it, what it is going to come up so you can predict the future that's one kind of it so when you get into the data analytics concept the reason for storing huge number of data like millions and billions of records will be stored using different database technologies the reason not only for storing the database it's used to predict the future analytics when i say future analytics in the sense let's say you can take the google as a live example so google what they do is like they get they they try to pull out the data of a couple of years back let's say five years back or ten years back and they'll go and monitor it how many users started using Google? How many users started using their GPAC, WeChat and all those stuff? Gmail and all those stuff. So they'll make an analysis. So they make an analysis in a way, how many users were there in the previous years and how many users are there in a current user, I mean current year. They will have the graph or a chart to it and they will understand how many uh, they have the notes. When I say notes in the sense, how many users, whether the users have gone up or whether the users have left their uh, a Gmail account or Google account and what is the reason behind it. They will come up with an analyze, analyzing part and they will they will go and create on it. Have you heard a recent uh, tech community meet with uh, this uh, Sundar Pichai? Have you all seen it? what he has bought on the gmail concepts they have a lot of things has been developed uh, in the google uh, apps they have bought the most uh, common one called ai concepts now it's ai is everywhere they have made the artificial intelligence more interactive to their products have you have you heard it have you worked on it have you seen it earlier in gmail we used to go and type all the stuff what and all is required we will go and type it and we will send us a message now it's not required at all we have an option called ai click on that 
it will give you a give you a small uh, you know intelligence or concept or just go and type inside an editor box just say that what it is required it will type automatically on your subject sorry on your body and you need to go and finalize it whether it is okay or not if it is not okay you can go and say that make the content more elaborately it will elaborate and explain it clearly it's a one shot which will happen within a 10 seconds so how this is happened this is not happened over a night it's all the data as they have they go they go and analyze with the data and come back and tell that what is the future prediction of it how they can improve their products this is a one kind which is a real time example you might have seen uh, a few uh, days back or a months back where sundar kuch has shared what they have uh, achieved in their uh, products and how how many users has been increased through that uh, i'm not sure how many people had yahoo or hotmail.com as their uh, email box i believe most of the people most of you would have uh, used it i mean this one uh, gmail will be your priority one and yes, uh, the other one is uh, like outlook of microsoft outlook or anything else that might you would have used it but i am not sure whether you are still using your yahoo or your rediff or your hotmail or your any any anything else i people using that any any anything else i people using any email box i typically no one right what is the reason behind can anyone tell me what made you to have much comfortable in the gmail than any other email box because it's popular and uh, safety safety is everywhere even you use your yahoo even use your rediff your hotmail your gmail is popular than yahoo sir popular is okay see popular is different then being user friendly yeah when it happens uh, popular when it makes you customizable and makes you happy and makes you user friendly then you you are happy with that the best example is everyone the most of uh, you know most of the houses has only windows os rather using an ios os or mac os so we are much comfortable right it's a user friendly that's the more important one so gmail gives us more user friendly where it's all customizable where we can go and easily access it however we want we need it whereas in yahoo ready hotmail if you go and see the presentation of the window itself will make you a weird one you will not be happy with that if if you people would have used it yahoo hotmail or ready mail you can see lot of difference between the uh, google uh, gmail what you're using and uh, that one so th- these kind of an analytics will be done at the background of an uh, analytics people so the job of an analytics people is like it's not only they will be dealing with the data they'll be working on the surveys like different charts kind of uh, you have different charts right pie chart bar chart and all this stuff the reason to think they'll be much working on the presentation areas the reason is they go analyze for the years of datas what they have been persisted or stored in the backend to understand and predict for the future what it can be and how we can accomplish for the product what they have yes any software you take it any application oriented software whatever application or any software which is in the market you take it every software has their own database it's not that they are just storing the data as the background and just get retrieving it or getting getting it to the customer it's it's not uh, there is no use at all if I, if i go just go and save it at the background and just pull it those data and show showcase that to the customer what is the use of it nothing no use at all if you go to any supermarket if you go and ask them what is the use of the software the people who uses that software they'll just tell that i'm just saving it it's getting get installed at the background and get retrieving it whatever i required it 
and tomorrow if a customer comes and tells that he has bought this particular product and he has lost his invoice bill or something else they can go and put his number and that retrieves what he has purchased it's not only those people's knows only that particular area what it does it but when you talk to the management they will clearly tell that what has happened at the last month of the sales and what is going to be the predicted one so how they are going to segregate it they go and segregate with the products they go and see last month what which product has gone up and which has sold at high and which has sold at least and which is an average based on that they will do their marketing they will do their strategic and they will keep marketing on that that's the reason behind if so the people who uses the software will not be knowing what is uses use behind of this uh, data as the background which is persisted we should be knowing what management is expecting at the end that's that's the way of working with the data analytics okay and uh, as i said to you at the earlier session you are using a youtube you people started using your facebook or whatever uh, social medias if you get into the youtube if you search something and if you come out of the youtube and next day if you get into it automatically what you have searched and what you have seen most frequently that will be recommended with other videos if you can see that that's marketing they wanted you to uh, you know uh, to be found of what you are looking uh, at the videos they wanted to make you more interested on that similarly in the facebook what you have read on uh, any particular things that will be you know recommended on next uh, next time when you log in into it that is called uh, marketing it's not marketing marketing in the sense i'm talking about analytics how the data are gets analyzed and how they are pushing it uh, to the people like us and how they are making us busy in their uh, products or any softwares this is how it is handled i've told you in the nutshell of uh, data analytics how it can be handled so when we get into much we will understand it okay let's get into this uh, back to the sql part now as we told it's used to store a huge amount of data and play around with the data however we required we can customize it and we can make it as a report or we can make it as however we required to the client side applications okay yes bala you can open the sql part now you would have heard and you would have been also very well known with the word name called normalization what is normalization why it is used in, a, in any of the databases right you would have heard something called normalization right what is the, what is the use of it what is normalization is why we wanted to use the concept called normalization in the database just just trust me just you, you already it's used for data cleaning data cleaning data cleaning is okay can you tell that to identify the data redundancy uh redundancy missing value okay. yes then any missing value or uh, any uh, redundancy in that uh, we find the uh, we find and eliminate we use the data anomalous system mm -hmm. so. yeah okay redundancy is accepted in the normalization concept what is the major and uh, what is what is the uh, main aspect of uh, using the normalization concept you can tell in a single uh, sentence there is something called set of rules and conventions is there where you need to follow it whenever you use your database without using your normalization concept if you use your database then your database gets collapsed we should follow some standards when you go and use your database right that's the reason be behind we are using a concept of normalization we have lot of normalization concepts we will not get into that because we know that what is a normalization and normalization has different concept we will we will go through each everything whenever we go and create inside this uh, database part. okay the window what you are seeing is an id it's nothing but integrated development environment where we can go and put on our scripts or syntax so that it can understand and execute whatever we require okay 
towards your left hand side what you are seeing is an object explorer object explorer will will uh, showcase you or show you the details about the database and inside the database you will have your tables and you have uh, your procedures functions triggers etc etc okay and each of your database will be connected with their own servers if i say own server in the sense where is the server of the database okay i'll show you uh, bala towards your left you have something called connect yeah yes sir the object explorer yeah you have something called database engine each database engine will have different servers you can see the server name here so the server name here it is as desktop hyphen and the name of the server name is there without the server or without any servers the database engine will not be connected so by default it creates the local server with this name and the database engine is gets connected with that okay if you go and click on browse for more click on that just below to it yes sir the okay you can open this see there is one server which is default created defaultly created when you go and create or install your uh, sql server uh, installation part and if we more than servers are if you wanted to see if there any other server is available for this you can click on the other tab called network service if it is there it will retrieve your data if it is not there it will not retrieve your data so the reason i wanted you to see here is if you have any networks any networks across your servers that will be listed here if your networks is not connected with any other servers then it will not list you will can see only the local servers tasaf now bala servers located in his own dev box and it is located in his local machine alone so the only server will be available is his desktop okay bala you can cancel this one. Yeah. and can you expand the databases Awesome, you have created this much. My goodness, man. Okay, so see, you can see lot of databases. So what I wanted is like you can uh, open your system database, but that is called master database. Okay, so this is the system databases is a default databases which were created during your installation part itself. it's an optional one either you can create it not if you don't want you do not to worry you, you can uncheck it that will not be created during your installation so i request uh, let's not uncheck it let's have this master database in few of the cases it is required so let have the default installation as it is okay yeah bala uh, you can close this uh, system databases so now i wanted to create a new database how can i create it there are two ways to create a database either you can use the gui graphical user interface and create it the second option is writing a syntax we can create it so i tell you how to use the graphical interface and create it on top of the database right click yeah no you have to right click on the database you have yes sir. yeah awesome so we have something called new database click on the database here pop up will be open a small window where you need to go and give the database name you can give it as uh, this one uh, uh, analytics Then now, 
sorry no no sir please continue. yeah so he has given the database as analytics so below to the database name you can see there is something called owner and below to it you can see something other name called database files whenever you go and create your database it creates with two files one is row file type and other one is log file type we call it as mdf and ldf okay there are two files will be created when you go and create your database one is called mdf and other one is called ldf okay i'll tell you why we why it goes and creates ldf and why it goes and creates an mdf concepts okay now click on okay so that you can go and create it Okay. So you have created a uh, database name called Analytics. You can expand that Analytics database name where you can see the structure of it. See, this is called a normalization concepts. The moment you go and create your database, it creates a skeleton. It creates a schema. It creates it creates a structure. So what and all the name I told it's a technical name. It creates a skeleton. It's nothing but a structure. It's nothing but a schema. It's nothing but this is how the rules has to be any database is created it should have this common created folders database diagram tables views programmability storage security and etc etc these should be the default one when you go and create your database got it now you can go and delete that analytics uh, right click on that database no delete wait hold on hold on at the end you have something called close existing connection there is a check box check box at the bottom yes so like click on sir yes 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 close existing connection you need to check it yes now the reason is we might not know what is running at the background as a service so we want to stop the service and we wanted to delete it completely so that any of the none of the files gets retained on that particular folder okay now you can click okay awesome now towards your right we have a sql query window where we go and put our syntax to create our database the syntax for creating the database is create database and database name so you can go and create as create space database and your database name is analytics a n a l analytics mm -hmm. spell spell you have Made and spell check. Okay. A N L analytics. Yes. So you can go and run this guy either by uh, choosing the execute or from your uh, keyboard you have F I concept. You can click on the F I to get execute. Either the two. So the moment you run it, you have the bottom the uh, query executed successfully. So this is a window which tells you a message whether you have successfully executed or you have any errors on that. Does it make sense? Yes. Now go on the top, refresh your uh, the entire database. Yes. Now go back, go up, click on the database. Yes, refresh it. Now open it. It has to rearrange it automatically, and it should be on the top. Awesome! You have that in the second place. That's right. So you can open and show the skeleton schema or the structure of it. Analytics. Uh, Well, you can open the analytics, expand and show them the structure, skeleton, or scheme. See, either 
by using the GUI or by writing the syntax to create the same structure. There is no difference at all. Does, make, does it make sense? Do you have any questions on that? How to create a database? So I've told you there are both the ways we can use a GUI or by using the I mean the syntax we can create a database. Okay. Now creating of the database, dropping of the database, or altering the database name. These are called DDL processes. Data definition language. Technically, people will tell go ahead and do a DDL process for this database. When they say you to do a process or any workflow on the DDL, you need to make sure you create the database first and make sure the database is created or not. If you want to alter the database name, you can alter it. Either you can go and drop the database, you can drop it. Drop in the sense I've told you by GUI, you are using your delete, drop it. And similarly, if you want to uh, do the same, you can go and drop your database by using a syntax. So you can go and write Bala as drop database database. Sir? Yeah, can you go and refresh your uh, yes? Now open and show them. The analytics should not be present over there. It should be removed. Yes, sir. Awesome. So if you wanted to completely remove the database, either you can use your UI or by using your DDL process, data definition language. You can use a create or drop whatever you require. Okay. You can run the first uh, syntax, uh, create database, database. Name. Run that particular syntax. Yes. How will you run it? Just go and highlight that and execute it. Perfect. So that this will be executed. If you don't highlight anything and run it, the entire syntax what you have written inside the editor window will run. If you go and highlight the particular syntax or a block of syntax, that particular block alone will execute. Okay? Yes, Got it. Awesome. Now, we have to create a table. So how can we create a table inside the database? So that it has a rows and columns so that we can go and use our complete normalization concept inside the tables with different relationship concepts as well. So there is a syntax or can we go and create through the GUI first and we can go and create through the syntax. So you can get into the analytics database. You have table, yes, new table. Yes, so when you go and create your new table, there you there it gives your schema representation. It asks you to create the column names. So let's create a column name. What can we create? So let's have our session batch one, right? Okay. Let's. Uh, so we go and say it as uh, students, student ID. First one is student ID. Yes. You should not give any space. If you are planning to give any space, you should have an underscore part. Okay. Yes. Student ID is a number or it can yes. be an alphanumeric. However you wanted to give. Based on that, you need to mention the data type. If it is a numeric alone, you can go and mention saying it as an integer. Or you can use something called numeric. If it is an alpha numeric character, then you need to say go and say it as a bar cat. Okay. Now, we, we will keep it as a number. And this can be kept as a data type as an integer. And you need to say whether we are planning to give an empty value to the particular column. 
if you wanted to give empty to the particular column then you need to go and say a test check mark for columns if you don't want to send any empty value to the particular column then you need to remove the checkbox okay that means if you remove the checkbox that means it clearly tells that it's a mandatory field okay you can uncheck that particular checkbox awesome uh yeah next call you can name it as student name and bar cap Yeah. Uh, That's okay. 20. No. Uh, okay. Twenty-five should work. Max should be twenty-five. See the length. What is the reason behind we are giving inside a bracket is called as a length. The reason for giving the length is the number of characters which goes and stores inside the memory. If you put it, give it as a height. Let's say if I go and give only strina the S R I N A T H, only this particular characters. The rest of the characters, I mean the rest of the space will be. empty and that will eat your memory so have a guess have the people names and you can have a name as only this much so that that can be stored in our database with the proper memory okay and if you think that you wanted to utilize a complete memory what it has then instead of 25 you need to go and say it as a max m a x max if you go and give it as a max then it will take the complete memory till the end what it has okay and next we have something called student data board student dob where you can have a date there is a data type name called date i yeah date is that just just check it yes you can open the yeah date time okay date, date time, time. The date, no, no, date of birth doesn't require any time. Okay, date should work. All right. Now, uh, date of birth is okay. Now the e hello. 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 People able to hear me? Sir, yes, sir. Ah, uh, bala, bala. Student ID. Sorry, student email. Can you verify? Yes, verify. That should work. And what can we give? The final one is like uh, phone number. Yeah, mobile number. What, how about you want to give? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. All right. And uh, you can go and save it. Either control yes or on the top you have something called yes. And the table name is uh, you can give uh, student details or student records. How will you want it? Yes, sir. Pop it. You can close this window. And towards your left, uh, click on the analytics and refresh your uh, database so that open the tables. Now you can see the table. Yes, sir. You have yes, twenty tables. So you can right-click on the tables. So you have script table as create the new query editor window. See here, I have created through the GUI. Now I wanted to see it as a syntax how it has written at the background. There you go. This is how we need to go and create when we go and create our syntax, rather creating our GUI. So what is required is 
we need to tell what database in which database the table has to be created that we go and say it as use analytics so when you say use in the sense it will go and change the database name and get executed the particular table inside the database and we have something called create table and table name and rest follows with the column names and the data type of it and finally with whether you are allowing it as a null or you wanted to make it as a default value here. okay and you have created your table by default primary key is also created if you wanted to see how it has been created the primary key any integer value which is applied to the table that will be creating on top of it so towards your left bala you can expand the table you have something called columns the no, student request yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. columns you can see the columns here and the keys just below to the columns you have yeah. keys okay the keys is not great awesome we will go on create on that that's it so towards your right you can see something called a syntax so this is how to create a table you need to write the syntax for it so i would like to prefer not to use the gui the reason for teaching you the gui is like if something goes wrong on the syntax you can utilize your gui so that you can understand and you can compare it easily okay this is how a table is created okay now what is the process or what is the technical name when we go and create a table alter the table select the table update the table and uh, delete the table this is called as dml data manipulation language this is technically called as data manipulation language you have something called ddl ddl is data definition language which talks about the database part and this creating of the table playing around with the table updating deleting inserting whatever you want to do it's all comes under your dml process okay now i wanted to insert let's see i want to i wanted to insert the values to the columns okay let's get it to the table so the details right click on it Wrong. you have something called insert now this is all does it edit edit there is something called edit no no not that one that will give you the syntax yes sir edit top okay. 200 edit top rows top exactly the moment you tell edit it will open you a window or the same windows where you can see and go and put your uh, i mean the values to it you can give one tab use your tab and put your put the name Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, student data work. Uh, D D M M O Y. You have to use your slash, I believe. Not your icon. Backslash. Yes. Okay. And student email ID. Oh, this has taken this bit. Okay. Year, month, and date. Okay, then uh, student, and finally click on tab. See that the changed value in the cell was not recognized as a valid. Okay, which one is that? Integer two. Okay, we have given the student number. Okay, student number we have given as integer, right? That's the reason it is not taken. So you can put a single number as of now. We can go and change later on it. Okay. Just put it as. Uh, that's okay. Okay, there we go. So integer, then more than uh, you know integer, the limit you have crossed it, so it is not allowing it. So you can tell it as either numeric or we can tell it as a bare character. 
okay we will change it later on now you can close this window now i wanted you to write a syntax now insert into table name Or you change this database. Yeah, that that's okay. We will change it. Uh, if you want, you can change it. Because it's uh, database. Okay. No, no, no. You have written database name. That's the reason. I wanted you to enter only the table name. Insert into table name. Table name is student details. You have typed analytics yeah. Okay, now yes. now you know what are the columns? Is. First one is ID, second one is uh, student name, third one is uh, I mean, you remember what what are the column names? Is that is showing the Okay, oh yeah, you sorry, yeah. So if you know the column ID, you need not to mention the column ID now. Instead, you can go and put it as values. Remove the bracket, put as insert into student table name values. Value P A L U E S. And open the bracket. Yes. Now you need to put the values alone. Student ID you can put two, comma. Single quotes you need to add your add the other name. Yes, excellent. String has to be put it in a single quote always. Date of birth. Yes, year. No, it's, it tells you that year, uh, month, and your date. Year ID. Yes, okay. here is 1987 or 19. Okay, how are you? Okay, hyphen, hyphen. Sorry, slash. Okay, even slash will take it automatically, but okay, that's okay. It will take it. You can put it as comma, and uh, you can go and add the email ID of the student in a single quote, and finally, then a phone number. That should be in single quote. Any string has to be represented in single quote. And the student phone number. Okay. No, no, you need not to give math fully. Just give three numbers, three digits. That should be. Round 48, that should work. Okay. Why it is. Okay. You can copy, I mean, you can select the entire uh, line and execute it. Okay. Now, you can go. And write another syntax called select star from table name. Yes, you can run this guy. Now you can see two rows which has been created, and we we have done that through the GUI as well as through the syntax. This is the way of adding your data to your tables. Now, if I wanted to alter or update, what can I do? Let's say if I wanted to add uh, or update the student name for Bala, what I can do is like I can use a command name called DML process name called update. Update table name set. Date table name set and the column name. Which column are you going to update? You need to represent it. Student name. Student. Yes. What is the change you are going to make it? No, no, no. Student name. Yes. Space student name. Student name equal to city quotes. You can go and put it as Balakrishna. You can have the space there, Balakrishna, or either the way. Okay. Now, see if you go and run this, it will get affected for both the tables. 
I mean both the columns. You have two rows, right? One is Bala and the other one is Patrishna. If you go and update this, it will get affected for two, two rows. rows. Yes. Go ahead and do that. Let's see it. And now go and do a select query. This is wrong, right? If we have millions of records, if you go and just go and update with a single change, then the entire millions and billions of records will get affected and that will collapse the entire data. We shouldn't do that. It's what is all required is like we wanted to make the Bala as Bala Krishnan only for a single group, not for both rows. So how can we make it use the same update query at the end put it as bar command? Now we need to filter it out. We need to filter it out so that it can go and pick it up the particular row and get that updated. Where student ID equal to 1. There, W H E R E. Where student ID equal to 1. Now change, remove Krishna inside the bar. All right, now run this and select it. See, what I required is just a one change to a particular row. Then I need to filter it out with a common or a primary key so that he can go and pick it out a single row, and that row can be updated with our changes. Does it make sense? Do any have do anyone have any questions on this? Creating of the database, creating of the table inserting the table, updating the table and selecting the table. Sir. Anyone else have questions? Yes. Uh, student. Where student ID use one, but changes come to student ID two. No man. See it carefully. See what I have made it. The change which I made is student name equal to Bala. Earlier it was Bala Krishna. So now I wanted to make Bala Krishna as Bala for the one row. So I removed the Krishna from Bala and I wanted to add it for the one row which is the student ID one. And it has updated with as a Bala. Mohammed. Can you confusing? Awesome. Thank you. Got it? Clear, sir. Awesome. Okay. Anyone else have questions on this? No questions? Okay. Perfect. Uh, anyone's Yuvashri or um, uh, Nandini or Malini, do you have any questions? No. Or looks? Okay. Fine. Okay, Bala. Next to uh, the update, we are going to do another statement called delete. Use delete from table name. Sir? Next one, sir. Yes, delete from table name. If you go select this and run, what it will happen is, hold on, down. what it will happen is, it will delete all the data inside the table. What you have created. Just go and run it. Uh -huh. No, delete from table name, boss. Table name. You are using a column name. Now go and do a select query. See, the reason for making you understand without using any filter, if you use your update, if you use your delete, then your entire table will get affected. Make sure and make be very careful when you use your two commands, one, one is on update, the other one is on delete. If you wanted to delete the entire table, then this is okay. If you wanted to delete only a particular row, then this is not okay at all. 
Simple, if you want to update the entire uh, columns inside your uh, uh, table, then update query is okay. If you wanted only a particular uh, column has to be updated, you need to use a filter command. Similarly, let's uh, go and insert that uh, on the top. Insert into the table name, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, just change two as one. Insert column, you have two, right? Change the yeah. value as one and uh, run it once again. Awesome. Now, select query. See here, I have updated uh, both the things. Okay. Now, what you are seeing is like I have updated two of the uh, columns and then the two of the rows. Now, I wanted to delete only one row. So, what should I use? I should, I should use something a uh, filter key column, filter class, name called that student ID equal to 2. So that the only one row will be deleted, the rest of all data set will remain the same. Does it make sense? So whenever you use your update, whenever you use your delete, make sure to you use your filter command because it's not a single record. It's a millions and billions of records will be there. If you do a single mistake, the entire data will get collapsed. Remember that. Have that in mind. Okay. Now, now I wanted to show you the difference. Uh, Bala to the next line, write drop table table name. Sir? Drop table table name. Drop table table name. Don't run here. Just put it drop table table name. Okay, hold on. Now I wanted to select delete from student details. Delete from table name alone. On the top, on the top, okay. Either way. On the top, you have delete from student details, right? You can select that as well. Either, either one is okay if you can type it. See, there are ma two major differences when you use your drop and when you use your delete command. Run only the delete command command. Delete from table name. And now do the select query. Watch carefully. When you use a class name called delete, it deleted only the data inside the table. Remember, please be very careful. What I am saying is, when you use your delete command or a delete class, it deletes only the data inside the table. It deletes only the data inside the table. Okay, now we use drop table table name. Go and enter. do that. What happened? What happened? Hey. Use your the entire table was created, sir. The entire table was deleted in the sense it has deleted the entire schema. Schema is nothing but your structure, your skeleton. It has deleted your skeleton itself. It has deleted your schema itself. It has deleted your structure itself. When there is no structure, you will not see anything inside your table. I mean, the table will not be, the table itself will not be there. Does that make sense? The reason for telling you is, you need to understand where, where when to use and how to use. So be careful when you're using your update and delete command. And you should be very, 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 very careful when you use your drop table. So by mistake, if you write something in drop table and if the table goes out, the schema deletes, all right, you have to put on your card, ID card, keep it there and you can walk out from that. Either thing, either delete or either drop. If you filter, you, if you immediately put a filter command, then you are uh, on the safer side. If not, you have to remove, put your card, ID card down and you have to come back in. Be careful. All right, does it make sense? Any yeah, questions on this? Retriever. Sorry? We yeah, have retriever. 
yes we do have but uh, as i told you there is a concept called mdf and ldf you can go and retrieve only the deleted commands if you would have dropped it we cannot retrieve it unless or unless unless or until your database is taken a backup before the day if they have taken a backup before the day then we can retrieve from the database and at least the records what it has been deleted today will be vanished so you will not have that much impact if they haven't took the backup till yesterday and you are dropping the entire table arogara goinda goinda that's it okay. you need to go for spirituality so make sure any handling with the database you should be very careful because i have seen a precious who is very enthusiastic who comes inside the office i mean when they come into the project all the mistakes what they do is this is the one they immediately go run it very fast and something goes wrong and they come back and sit and they start trying and they're saying that hey, something went wrong on the project when we go and do what they have done then we'll find it out they have used something that delete or a drop command that to have eaten entire table and what to do as as we are the front end people we will be the first people to beat up so we are, we will be very careful we will be re restoring that database what it has been taken and yesterday night and we will be comparing with what happened with today's to so make sure whenever you are into the project you should be very careful when you go and write your scripts it's not a play around it's not a five year project where you have three members three three hours of time where you can go and just execute it just a, just a second bala i'll be back
so yes oh it is embedded object now all right so does that make sense so whenever you use your drop update and delete you have to make sure that you have to use with a where clause for update and delete so ne never ever forget without in the without using your uh, filter clause the update and delete will uh, entirely collapse the table all right so this is called a thread operation which we do it in our sql server okay so what i have taught you is like how to create a table and a database create and drop of the database is called data definition language then data manipulation language is nothing but us there you go and manipulate your languages like select update insert and delete and something called a data i mean drop concept as well because we don't use much the drop concept in the inside the table but i wanted you to understand there is a concept called drop as well okay this is this is how we create a table and go and add the data as what it is required now Uh, uh, sir, I have a doubt. Yes. Sir. Yeah, can I? Yeah. Sir, in some cases, sir, if you want to add a uh, uh, more than a uh, two, two, I mean more than one record in a uh, insert or update. Uh, if you want to update or uh, insert more than one records in a query, in the sense, what what should we do? Awesome. So how it works? Yeah, this works. I'll tell you how. Uh. Uh, Bala. Sir, you have in the update command. Okay, first thing is uh, you can go and create that table again on the top. What we have created are already written, right? Yeah, you can create the table. Create table table name or. Yeah, table name. Oh, we haven't right. Okay, you can put create table. Put either way, GI or how we want. Student ID. Okay, uh, on the top you have written the insert command, right? So, yes. as okay, now we wanted to add multiple uh, values to the insert command. There are a couple of ways. One, you can copy the entire row, and I mean the entire uh, entire line, and paste paste it to the next line and change the values however you need it. That is one way of doing. It. Okay, the other way is like, okay, this is one way. The other other way is like you can remove that line in Abala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you have pasted now, you can control Z. Okay. At the end of the values, you can what you can go and say is say is like there is 748 right, and you close the bracket, and next to the bracket you can put it as comma and open and again a bracket. Now that's back bracket is ready, right? You have closed one value. Yes. Come on, and you can open the bracket. 
now again put it as two comma and yeah you are giving the id name now as two and you can go and put uh, whatever the name you want right Just only three digits as we have given as in future. Okay, perfect. You can close that bracket. Now yes. you can similarly how many values you wanted, you can put a comma and you can go and put your values. Okay, select the entire row. Now execute it. What happened? There are table numbers, sir. You have changed the table name? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Can run it okay. What happened? Sir, database name is uh, the insert okay. Oh, you have used a single quota. Okay, fine. So now go and do a select query on that table. There we go. And now, if you wanted, so the database name created in thirty three and hundred. Sir, Bala and Bala next next two student name equal to Bala put as comma in the update for you. If we wanted to update multiple columns, so what we can do is one is yeah next to Bala, next to Bala. Yeah, that's next to Bala, right? Yes, okay. Now put comma. Yes, sir. Now, yeah, exactly. Add the column as. Uh, and the column. You can say something called. Uh, Uh, student phone number. Equal to uh, the one. Student phone number equal to. Little one, whatever you want to do. All right. So you can run this particular line. Similarly, if you wanted to update multiple columns, put a comma and the column name represented with that. Why is that? Uh, say student phone number. No, D E N T. T is left out. No, T is missing. Sorry. In student phone number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Now go and do a select query on. Uh, the student table now you can see the multiple uh, columns would have been updated there you go yes. you change the student name to change the student phone number does it make sense uh, nandini i believe right you asked me can you hear me nandini yes sir i didn't ask questions oh sorry uh, who is that uh, dharani yeah? yes sir oh sorry i did not come does it make sense? Does it uh, yes, answer your question? Yes, sir. Uh, in especially on a update, uh, uh, I mean, an update query, yeah. how can we, I mean, how could we raise that? More than, uh, record, I mean, one record. Yeah, that's what, see, record, you, you, you mean to tell that uh, more than a row or a more than a column for a single row. We cannot uh, go and update multiple uh, rows at a time. Because mm -hmm. the reason is we have to filter out where using where clause. 
so where you can go and update multiple columns in a single row that is what he had done he has used two columns one is here and asking about it uh, in a in a record that is uh, i mean that is any mistake in a row in the sense we are importing two records how could we update from a uh, uh, for example uh, it's a hundred uh hundred records in a table me in the sense that is a mistake in two to three records in the sense how could we update those two uh two to three records at the same time or is it possible to update like this like right. this yeah that that is a possible so first question is you said you have 100 records and inside an 100 records you have only three records to be updated which is a false one and my question is do you know which records for example do you know which column will have the wrong records do you have an idea or even yeah. you're asking that that how can we find it out no sir not really so how, then how could we uh found out the uh, wrong i mean wrong record or something okay. else uh um, see any columns when you go and insert you will go and say that that the particular data type right if you go and tell to the column as integer there you will obviously go and insert only the integers you will not go and in, go and insert your var cap even you do that it will throw an error saying like there is a conversion error obviously the records what it has been sent from the client end or from the front end it will always be validated and it will be sent to the back end you by mistake in the sense let's say in the var cap if i go and give balakrishna and instead of giving as balakrishna i'll go and say balakrish and left out rest of the characters then if you feel like that one particular record is missing then you need to go and write a query call let's say uh balakrishna uh, at the end you can go and write a query to find out the records which is missing out there. yeah at the end you can put select star from table name sir yeah where uh student name like Put a name like uh, single quotes. Give a space. Single quotes inside the single quotes. You have to put the percentage. Percentage. Two percentages. The no, percentage. No, no, no. Uh, there is a percentage symbol, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, and one more percentage. Yeah, inside the percentage, you need to put bala or b. Just put b. Don't yes. give the space before the percentage. Now run this guy. See here, Darni. So this one kind of way we can go and search the records and see where the particular data are missing out or where the particular records needs to be updated. Let's say what I did is like I searched the entire table of a particular column. and used a like command to find it out what record what what record has to be inserted is working as expected or not so i just with a prefix or suffix if i don't know what is the value exactly it is if i wanted to search it based on that particular character i've used to two percentages so prefix and suffix if anything with the b it will going to pull out the records and showcase us so now we got the records right based on the records we will be getting the student id as a var class and we will be updating it this is one way of doing it that's another question yeah this is one way okay this is one way of finding the records and just going and updating it now i got var the value of b is so one of the values is that it has a character of b in a particular record of student 1 so bala if i wanted to change the bala as bala krishna then i can go and update using the record id as 1 does that answer you this is one way what i am telling is there are so many ways are there in question still you are confused on that okay a little bit uh my point i mean my question is uh, 
in some suppose two to three records in a row is a, I mean is it possible to update the two to three records at the same time in a single uh, query no, I, I just I just got confused so the first question earlier you asked is like uh, you wanted to find where is the mistake of the record but now what you're asking is like you wanted to update multiple rows is that correct oh yes sir first uh, uh, bala just scroll it up a bit there is a concept called update student table set student name and student phone number okay you that's what I'm, i keep saying you can go and update multiple columns in a row if you have single row you can go and update multiple columns or all columns whatever the is required by using a var class if you remove the var class if you remove the var class and run the rest of the things it will get affected to all the rows yes i am clear in this part uh, in insert uh, insert into command i mean insert into query we can uh, add two uh, i mean two records uh, entries uh, as well in you know, update we can uh, is we, it is possible to uh, remove or uh, update uh, two records at the same time how how can you uh, write a query in this case Correct. okay uh, my question is uh, more than one record you want to update right yeah there are a couple of ways if you wanted to uh, update more than one record inside the var command bala inside the var command you have written student id right instead of instead of equal to you can put it as in remove the equal to remove the equal Hello. to student as, uh, yeah student id update student name set student bala student phone number 125 and var uh, student id equal to is there right remove the equal to yes not there yet. Ah, yeah, exactly. You are right. You are right. In, I am. Give a space. Give a space. That's a clause. Open the bracket. Next to the in, you need to open the bracket. Okay. One comma two. Uh, Darni, here what I am doing is, sir, yes, sorry, sir. Comma. So what I am doing is, I am adding multiple student IDs. In a one shot, I am updating two rows for the two columns one is student name the other one is student phone number you can run this bala you can close the bracket and run this okay. got it now see here there you go two rows of a cut select the query yeah select start from the table name till that yeah you can select it and you can run it there you go it's a change sir that Yes, you can uh, say both. Yes, sir. More, I, yes, please. Yes, sir. Uh, my question is uh, two different. Uh, if uh, if you want, if you uh, want to up update two different records, I mean two different student name, uh, two uh, different uh, date of birth or mail ID in the different. I mean two in two uh, student ID. How could we uh, write a query in this case? I mean. Uh, okay. Completely so, different, distinct characters. I mean, distinct uh, data at the same time. Yeah. How so, yeah. Obviously, obviously, you have to update with two commands. I mean, two. You have to use uh, two update yeah. commands. Dif uh, distinct character. I mean, yes. distinct characters or uh, distinct uh, data. Yes, you need to use two different uh, update commands. I mean, uh, Bala, you can go and copy that entire update command and put to the next left. I mean, next one, next line. Copy it and paste it. That is one way. And you can again paste it down. One more. Okay. On the top, student ID in right, you can remove that and put equal to one. Bar class has it, right student ID. First one, remove that in and put it as equal to no, that's right, man. Just remove the in. in. Yeah, you could do. Instead of in, replace as equal to. Okay. Uh, hold as one. Yeah, remove rest all. One and two, can you remove that. Brackets and all the way. Yes. Similarly, for the next one, equal to two. 
So, Dharani, in a single statement, we cannot go and update the entire uh, the number of rows water doll is required. As the rows has a unique ID, we need to copy multiple update commands. And however you wanted the name or any column needs to be changed, we can change it. So, in the second uh, 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 thing, uh, Bala, you need to go and add student name as Balakrishna. Just change the phone number as uh, 126 or whatever. Okay. Now you can run both of the things. Okay, now select start from. Yeah. Yes, uh, Dharni. Again. Uh, yes, sir, I got it. Okay. You cannot run in a single statement for sure. Okay, update okay. command if you go and use it you can run for multiple columns in a single statement but for multiple rows you need to add a one more update call i mean the update statement okay okay so that's the thing i want to just know um, All right. okay. Thank for you, insert, okay for insert it's different for update it's different and for delete it's different yeah. okay so okay fine okay uh, anyone else any anyone else any any questions on the operation. All right. All right. Uh, what's time now? It's... All right, then we'll uh, have a break and we all can meet the uh, time it is uh, 5 uh, uh, 5.15. You can go for a break, have a break, come back by uh, 5.15 or, uh, yeah, 5.15 should be over, 15 minutes of break. All right. Hello. All right. Okay, sir. Sure, sir.
It's all back. Bala, once you're back, let me know. Hello? Hello, sir? Yeah, if you're back, uh, you can share your screen. It's all back. And if it's not, you have to uh, not come. All right, let's wait. கேக்குதா <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, sir. Can we? Yes, sir. Okay, what happened? We have only 10 members. Now, already it was 13, right? And three of the members has not joined or we have left. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Now. All right, uh, Bala, you can share your screen where we can see the concepts behind the relationship. Sorry, my screen is missing, sir. Uh, it's loading now for me. Yeah, I can see now. All right, so what we have seen is the third operation with VML process. Okay, now we'll get into the concept called relationship. What's called primary key relationship and foreign key relationship. So on the top, you have written a statement called create, right? So what we need to do is like, uh, we've written a create statement, not at all right. Uh, either the way we can go and create it. One is, towards your GUI, you have column name called student ID. Right click on the student ID. Yeah, yes, sir. And uh, uh, instead of that, we we'll go and do that in the table. Okay. Uh, click uh, right click on the student uh, table under the table name. You can right click on the student table name. Yes. And you have design. Click on the design part. Yes, sir. Just click on the student ID. You have one more row, one more column before the column name. Yes, you have an arrow, arrow, arrow key right towards your left. Click on that. Yes, awesome. So, yes, set primary key. This is one way of doing it. Okay, when you go and set the primary key and save it. Now go and do a select query. Okay. Uh, towards your left, you have columns right. You have keys. Then go and refresh your table and open the keys towards your left. What you have already expanded is. Keys. Yes, sir. There you go. So you have created one primary key. That's the reason it has created on the table name called PK and the key. So if you have, you can go and click on that. Please right click on that. And uh, script key as create to. And yes, new query it be. So this is how on the syntax part we need to go and create the keys. So this is how on creating a table we will be adding a primary key and we will when we go and add a primary key by default we will be in ascending order. If you wanted to make a descending order, get into the query, next uh, tab, click on the next tab, you have something called select query, right? By default, when you go and create your uh, primary key, it, it takes one of the default order class as an ascending order. If we wanted to make a 
make the selection in a descending order, we have to go and mention it. Now, so you have another tab, already your uh, editor window, you have opened it. This, you can close this window. Select start from the table name, you can close this window as well. Select start from the table name, order by you can write is a yes order by student id or your by all together yes no sorry uh, by should be space space which should be this space the yeah, student id go and run this guy now See the difference? No, it's easy. Uh, I think the third name. Yes. Okay, now see here. The moment we use it all by by default, as I said, you is going to take an ascending order. Now, if you want to make it a descending order, at the end you need to go and mention the class name called D E S C, descending order. D E S C. Yes, now I'll go and run this guy. Now you can see the number, the student ID, the two will be on the top. Yes. This is how we can go and change the order however we want it based on the columns. So I've used a student ID. If you wanted to make as a student name, you can filter it. You can order by through the student name as well. So alphabetical way it will be it will be added. And you use an ascending. If it is descending, the last come first in. That means last added row will be on the top first. Make sense? Okay. Now, so we have created one table and we have used a DDL process, DML process to do our thread operations. Now, uh, what I wanted is like, okay, let's go and create another table. Uh, so through the syntax, we are going to create a table. Bala, uh, at the end, go and create a table. Create table, table name. So new create table? Yeah, new new, uh, new table name. Give a new table name. Say, saying like, already we had student table, right? We can say it as uh, department table. No, no. <clears throat> Department table and uh, open the bracket and uh, keep the column names with the data type department ID space integer excellent and uh, you need to mention no no commas no commas you need to mention whether it's a not null or null not null not null Space, give a space for not and not. And then comma, the second column. Department name. Yeah. Instead of department name, hold on. You can have student ID here. Where we can create a foreign key relationship between the two tables. Instead of department name, we can go and create the third one as a department name. So in the second place, you can have something called student ID. Student ID, integer, not null, comma, then your department. This one is null or not null. Student name? Uh, not required. Student name we can pull out from student table itself. That's the reason we are having a foreign key relationship. The department name is done right. Okay, yeah, that's enough. You can remove the last comma and you can close the bracket and the correct. Okay, before running, you need to mention the foreign key relationship here, right? So what we can do here is you can put something called foreign at the end, comma. What you've done is right, comma, and uh, in the next line you can put as foreign key. 
Null comma. Last one null, right? Yes, sir. Next to the null, you can put comma before the bracket. Yes. Enter. You can put foreign key. Foreign space key. And inside the bracket, you need to put uh, student ID. Inside the bracket. Yeah, this, this should be in bracket. For put it in bracket. Student IDP should be in bracket. Separate bracket. Yes. Yes. ENT. And space references. We need to tell from which table we are going to reference the reference this particular uh, ID. So references. REF references. REF REN. REF REN CS references. Space F E. References R E N C S references. You need to tell that what table it is. References space the table name student table. Ah, S T U B E N. Yes, that table name of that particular column value inside the bracket. Okay, table. Open the bracket and put that column name. Column name is nothing but your per person per student ID, right? What is the name inside the table? What is the ID you have given? See that column name. Student name. Sir, student ID. Sure. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Put that same one. See what we are giving. We can close that last part. Data. It's already closed. Huh? Okay. Okay. So what we are giving the reference is like we are telling in the secondary table we are going and adding a one more column called student ID, which is going to be a reference of that primary table. Primary table is what student table is our primary table, and inside the student table, what column we are representing? We are referencing with the class name called references. So now go and run it. Perfect. Now you need to go and insert it. At the bottom, you can write or however you want it, you can go and insert with the tool. Now, insert into department table values. Open the bracket values. Open the bracket and department ID is one. Come on. No, no, no. When you give the values, you need not to mention the yeah, yeah, yeah. values. You can directly mention the uh, the input value of that. One come on. One is department ID one. Okay. Now department ID you need to refer to the student. Already we have two records one and two. You can go and say it is one again. For first student you are. Adding the department for it. Okay, Omar. What is the department? PC, whatever you wanted to give, you can give. CSC, IT, whatever. It should be in single character. I mean, single. Uh, it's a string. It's a single quote. Yeah. Awesome. Now close the bracket. Tama again. Tama again. Open the bracket. The second value is to be given. So two comma two. Because. All right, you can close the packet at that. Now I'll just what is that? Ah, the bottom of the column. What is it? What is that? So then, string or binary data would be truncated in table. 
why it is truncated and failed. Um, what's the column name? Department ID, yeah? Department. Department. But, uh, at the bottom, you have a uh, scroll bar, right? Horizontal yeah. scroll bar. Just scroll it. At the bottom, at the bottom. You have a message window. Okay. Column department name. Okay. So department name, what is that you're giving? See, you have not given this guy. What is that? Length. See, I even forgot. You have mentioned the square care, but you haven't mentioned the name. Obviously, yes. when you don't mention the length, it's not going to take any memory. It's a zero. So what you can do is just go create the length of the department name, 25. Okay. And uh, you need to drop the table first. To recreate it, you need to write drop table table. So you can uh, run this create table again and then run the insert part. All right, now select the curve table. So let's start from the department cable. Department table. Awesome. See here, we have two IDs. This is a foreign key of the primary key. I mean, by primary table. That we have we have given a column a student ID and we have referenced here. Okay. Now, what I wanted is I wanted to write a query in a select statement to bring out the student name is date of birth and department name. How will you able to bring it up? How can you bring it up? Okay. So for that, we have a concept called joins. There is a concept called join as inner join. You can go and uh, make an inner join and you can bring it up. Or you can use a common name called join and bring it up. Okay. So is it, do anyone know that how to write an inner join or a join on that? All right, you can write uh, at the end, uh, select start from. Yeah. At the Again, end, sir. yes. So select star from primary table. You need to go and write first primary table. We are going to pull out a couple of columns, right? So select star from no no no. Select star from the primary table as put put it in the new line, next line, not in a single line. So that uh, it will be easier. Now, give an other enter. No, no, no. The select start from the sub uh, table. Yeah, give that enter over there. Bring it down. One more new line. Bring the select down. No, no, no. You have to bring that select up. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Right. Now, select start from table name. What you have mentioned is the primary name primary table and you also need to mention the secondary table as well right so we don't want to confuse you so not making to confuse with the table name we'll give an alice name so let's have an alice name for the student table as st at the end of the student table give a space and gives us st not here correct start from no not there not there select start from student table next to that give a space yes sir 
So let's start. Yeah, give a space and give us Alex name. When I say Alex name, instead of giving a big name, we can give a short name. St. Perfect. Now, what I wanted is I wanted to bring out my student name and the date of birth and the gender department, right? So how can we bring it out? First, we have uh, first we have added the table as primary table. So from the primary table, what are the columns is required? I need student name. So go and put as st dot student name. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, sir, sir. Perfect. Now, instead of star, I'm saying put as st dot. Not, not that. See, remove that student name over there. St dot. Yes. That's an alias name for the table name. So you shouldn't put it over there. Remove the student name and dot. Yes. See, st is nothing but the name, the table name. What you have given in a bigger way, right? Student table. Instead of mentioning as a student table. Multiple times when you go and call the columns, you can mention it in a short as an alias name as st. Remove the dot. <clears throat> now, in at next to the select, we have mentioned a star, right? Remove that star and put it as st dot. <clears throat> now we are, with the help of the table, we are trying to pull out the column names. So student name. Yes, comma, st dot, data book. <laughs> what is the student data book? That is what we mentioned. Okay. Okay. Now run this guy. Sir? Yeah, run the entire statement. Does it make sense? So, First thing, what I wanted to achieve is like from the table, I wanted to bring the student name and date of birth. Okay, from primary table. Now, I wanted another table column has to be projected in a single state. So I have to use a second table name as well. For that, what can I do is okay. Next to the st, put an enter. Get into the new line. Okay, now. Now I have to mention a concept called join. So you can mention as inner join, or you can put as join. So that can be in the next line itself. Uh, you know, to go for that. Join. Same line or another line? No, just above. Just above. You know, to give a space. Yes. Join. What is the next? Uh, this one, my uh, guy. Table uh, name. Department table, sir. Yes, department table. Department table. You can give the alias name as D. On. On is a plus. Space on. D. T. Dot. Okay, yes, D. T. Dot. What is the common between the two tables? Which is the common yeah. one? Common column. Uh, department ID and uh, student ID. No, the common between the two tables is student ID alone. Department ID yeah, belongs yeah, to the yeah, department yeah. table. But what yeah, is common so. between the foreign key between the two tables is student ID. So you have to mention yeah. student ID. Student ID equal to st dot student ID. Okay, now you can run this time. What happens? Happy birthday. What is that? Give give a space. You know, join you. Let it give a space. Yeah, now now just one minute. So one second. Yeah. 
plus one by three into two into b into b, right? Sir, open gap. Okay, that's okay. Even it's a case. It's not a case in Stephen. S P L is not a case in Stephen. You can put however you want it. Okay, that's good. Fine. Now, are you able to see what's the? Yeah. Oh, no, you have to run both the lines. You cannot run single line because it's one single statement. You need to select entirely. Yes. So what I wanted is, I wanted a student name, student date of birth, and I also did one more table, and I wanted to pull out that particular column. So on the top, you have student date of birth, right? So put a comma before the from, and put dt dot department name. Yes. dt dot department name, right? That's one. Department name. How do you give them a sir? There you go. Does it make sense? How to join both the tables? And you should have a common table where it can go and pull it out and have the combination. See, the primary keys value has to be presented in the second secondary table. If it is not present in the secondary table, it will not pull out the records. When you use an inner join, the concept of inner join is right. It should have a similarity between the primary and the secondary table. Then only the common thing will be pulled out by using your inner jump. So as of now, my requirement is like I, I wanted to pull out a student name, student date of birth, and a department name, and also clearly told that what are the students present in the primary table that needs to be pulled out from the secondary table, which matches. If it doesn't match, it will not pull it out. Does it make sense? Excuse me. Anyone have any questions? No, sir. Okay. Okay. Anyone? Uh, anyone else? No questions. Okay. Okay. So now. What I wanted you all to do, I don't want to get into the other steps called uh, left out of join or uh, uh, you know uh, right out of join or anything else. I wanted to come up with CRUD operation. So I what what my next POC is? What's your POC is? I wanted you to create two tables. Please note it down. I wanted you people to create two tables. One is on. The table name should have employee. The table name should have employee. And the other other table, the secondary table name should have employees uh, salary details. So inside an employee table, the columns will be employee ID, employee name, Employee date of birth, employee email, and employee mobile number. What we have kept for the students, similarly, and for the secondary table, what I have mentioned as employee salary details, we should have employee salary details ID, and then that we need to go and create the foreign key between the two tables. I believe you know what needs to be created. I'll not tell you. You need to go and create the foreign key between the two tables. Then employee salary. And employee date of join, four columns. Okay, you need to create. So make sure accordingly you to, you have to go and mention the data type. I will not tell what data type has to be mentioned for what. You have to think accordingly. You need to go and create the data type for that. Once it is all created, I wanted you people to do all the things not with the GUI. I wanted strictly to follow and write the syntax for each of the everything. I wanted you to create. Database, create the table, create everything through using syntax, not through your GUI. GUI is a secondary part. I just wanted to tell you just for the reference. If you are putting putting a pen down, obviously you have to put your syntax. Okay, and everything has to be done in the syntax. Once you are done with your syntax writing, creating your table, now I wanted you to pull out the employee name. Employee date of birth, employee email, then employee salary, and employee date of join. 
all five columns i wanted to bring it up you i have to showcase me right in the search bar i wanted to i wanted to give people to project employee name employee uh, email id date of birth and employee salary and date of job all five columns this is one worker the second is i wanted you to pull out the employee name employee date of joining and employee salary whose salary is more than 50000 okay so two workers one is pulling out all the employee details completely from two different tables and second one is i wanted to bring pull it out only the employee name from the employee table and rest the employee the employee date of joining and employee salary from the other table and whose salary is greater than 50000 this is a poc see why i am giving this to data analytics people is like it's not only you'll be pulling out and adding the data at the background you will be asked to work out you will you will be asked to work out on reports as well in at that time you cannot go and say that you will not be handling the reports to handle the reports you need to write the query right so the logic is different different logic will be the logic will be given to you where you need to perform and get the exact what is the requirement given by the client or the customer who are this any questions on the poc proof of proof of concept the abbreviation of poc is proof of concept any questions on this no yes anything all right two members said they have no questions we are good with that let's talk so yes all right all right okay uh i want anyone to uh take an initiative and summarize what we have taken for today anyone can you want to represent by then sir please uh, unmute yourself and you can summarize what you have taken for today so that i can at least understand that at least a 2 to 5 percentage has been taken inside you people so that i'm happy i can go happy out of the session not even i'm asking you to take inside 10 percentage or more than at least 2 percentage to take yes no please Yes, uh, today class is very really useful for me, and uh, I know the uh, we create a table for uh, syntax in the way, and we use uh, graph tables in the way. It's yes. uh, very helpful. Uh, I really uh, learn these things, and also we uh, we can explore the DDL and the DML data definition uh, uh, language, and we create a table. Got, uh, and uh, you also uh, told a uh, very important one: uh, to delete and the uh, drop, uh, say, uh, drop uh, times we use. Uh, uh, definitely, we use a var class uh, because uh, the total uh, we use a drop uh, in the total data was will be deleted. So it is very really useful for uh, learning the new things in this class. It's uh, very useful for me. Totally overall, I learned many, many new things. Exactly, some left join, right uh, 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 joins, uh, uh, different joins. We are uh, today we are uh, using inner joins. So many things are uh, learned in this class. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. That's great. Right. Anyone else? Anyone else have any questions? 
anything else to be uh, no sir thanks to you i don't have any questions sir i really don't thanks bhai yes so shortly you will be created with telegram uh, chat box uh, group where we we all you all can communicate over there and just add your comments if anything you have any clarifications on that so uh, probably soon uh, that will be created all right yep have a good day thank you guys thanks bala bala uh, uh, what i wanted is like bala you can uh, copy all the syntax and put that in a notepad and you can drop that inside this uh, in google let's say so that they can go and uh, you know copy it if they want or check it they can go and have a look at that is it like guys i just wanted to ask you that why people getting the recorded ones once it has been completed or what is that Are you getting the recorded session once it is completed? Or how is that? No sir. You're not you, you're not getting the recorded session. No sir, there is no. Okay. Okay, I'll have a word. Uh, Let's see, and uh, we'll try to get uh, you the recordings of the podcast. Don't forget to come back for it. Right? Yes, you can copy this, and I mean, you can uh, save this notepad. You can paste this on the chat or whatever you want. And if uh, the persons who have not joined today, I'm not sure what happened to them. If they are back, you can share this. Uh, do you have contact with other uh, peoples? Uh, I mean, other uh, elements where no. you have contact. If not, no sir. No sir. Okay. So everyone are from different, huh? So is that not from any similar college or like that? Yes, sir. Only team lead only connect with our peoples. Oh. All right. If they are back on the next session, let's uh, forward this uh, what we have taken the previous session so that they can. Have it. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks all. Have a good day. Enjoy your day. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.